Okay, so in this video we're going to be discussing the presentation of a woman who has stopped her periods and the five main causes um, that should be in your differential diagnosis and how we can try and differentiate each one from the other. Uh, we'll go through the hormone results that you'd expect to find for each woman, diag the diagnosis, um, what part of the history, what symptoms she's noticing, what you'll find on examination, what investigations you should then carry out, um, the risk of this condition for the woman, um, and then we'll discuss the management, both if the woman wants to become pregnant or if she does not want to become pregnant. Okay, so the first condition is Ashman syndrome, which is really just scarring of the womb. Um, all the hormone results of this will be normal because it's a physical condition. Um, and the women present will have, she'll have all the other symptoms of her period, such as cramping and PMS, uh, except bleeding. Um, and because the problem is isolated to the womb lining, the examination pretty much will be normal. Um, and so in this sort of case, the best investigation to do is hysteroscopy or an ultrasound scan, which will allow you to view the scar tissue inside the, the uterus. Um, and the main risks really to the women just are infertility. Um, there are no other problems really associated with Asherman's. Um, so it really requires, if she doesn't want to become pregnant, then there's no management required, um, as there's no other problems associated. However, if the woman does want to become pregnant, um, you can br actually break down the scar tissue at the hysteroscopy um, to then stimulate the creation of new womb lining and then a copper coil could be added and then it should be left in for three months. Um, and this will st stimulate increased growth in the uterine wall um, and should hopefully give her a normal uterine lining. The next condition is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. And this is quite a fancy word. If you just break it down, it just explains exactly what the condition is. So hypogonadotrophic means that there's low um, hormones that go into the gonads. Um, and this then causes hypogonadism, which means that the gonads aren't producing the hormones that they should be. So this explains the hormone results, which means that they'll have low FSH, LH and estrogen. Um, as the gonads produce some of the testosterone, testosterone will be slightly decreased but the adrenals also produce some testosterone so it's not fully decreased and then prolactin and TSH will both be normal. As part of the history these women are often quite thin so the history would maybe have some ex excess of exercise, they would have recent weight loss, um, maybe some stress recently causing them not to eat properly uh, or illness as well. In our examination these women tend to have a reduced BMI, although it can be normal in some cases. The best investigation to do, um, well, you don't have to do anything really to diagnose this condition as it is diagnosed in the blood results, but it is useful to do a bone scan just to assess women's overall bone density as the reduced oestrogen can, uh, can cause osteoporosis, which is the main risk. And you may also want to consider doing a brain scan if there's an increased BMI, as there might be some sort of brain tumour causing the low, causing high GnRH, which then decreases the gonadic, gonadotrophic hormones. So management for this condition, if the woman does not want to become pregnant, is either hormone replacement therapy, um, which is just low dose estrogen. Um, so it has lower side effects than the alternative, which is the combined oral contraceptive pill. But if the woman can tolerate this, then this is a good option too. Uh, if the woman does want to become pregnant, uh, I'd recommend some lifestyle changes, perhaps stop exercising as regular layers, intense exercise, uh, maybe stop diet if they're on a diet, that sort of thing, just to try and increase their BMI again. Um, you could also give some low dose LH and FSH just to stimulate the ovaries to start producing estrogen again. Um, and then also positive GnRH can also help stimulate the ovaries to start producing again. Okay, so problem number three, um, premature ovarian insufficiency. This is pretty much just the premature menopause. Um, yeah, and it's just the ov it's an ovarian problem, it's the follicles just running out, they've not got any follicles left. So hormone results, they'll have increased FSH and LH, 
um, as there's low oestrogen because the oestrogen is not providing feedback up to the hypothalamus. So the FSH and LH are high, oestrogen's low. Testosterone again is slightly reduced, but the adrenals are compensating. And PRL and TSH are both normal. So in the history, the women will have symptoms in menopause, uh, such as hot flushes, night sweats, that sort of thing. Um, they may have a past history of chemo or radiotherapy for cancers. Uh, this can damage the ovaries and then result in a premature menopause. They may have a family history of this problem. Um, and also, a common cause is X chromosome problems, for example, Turner's. Um, and remember, Turner's can be a mosaic condition, so although women may not have the Turner's phenotype, she may have Turner's genotype. So examination is usually normal. Um, so, this is talking about X conditions, so investigation to do would be a karyotype if young. Uh, an autoimmune screen is also a good idea, um, just to rule out any of these problems. And then a bone scan as well, because one of the risks of the, having the low oestrogen is, of course, osteoporosis. Um, so similar management to previous. Uh, if they don't want to become pregnant, uh, you have to give them HRT or the combined oral contraceptive pill. Um, and if they do wish to become pregnant, they would have to have the egg donation and the donor would have to go through IVF. Then the women would have, to, once the egg's been donated, they'd have to have progesterone for about 8 to 10 weeks. Problem number four is hyperprolactinemia. Um, this is just the body being tricked into thinking that it's breastfeeding uh, when in fact it's not. So the hormones here, they'd be low FSH and LH, low estrogen, low-ish testosterone, increased prolactin and normal TSH. And the main part of the history is that the woman would be complaining of producing milk uh, from her breast, so galacteria. Um, on examination, you may find a bitemporal hemianopia, um, as this condition is caused by a pituitary tumour, which is close to the optic chiasm. So if this is compressed, then this results in this visual de field defect. Um, so the main investigation is an MRI of the brain, which will allow you to view if there is a pituitary tumour or not. Um, as this causes decreased oestrogen, the main uh, risk is osteoporosis to the women. Um, Dopamine agonist is the main management. Uh, this is used if a woman doesn't want to become pregnant or wants to become pregnant um, as dopamine reduces levels of prolactin. Uh, important point actually, in the, as dopamine agonists reduce prolactin, dopamine antagonists can actually increase prolactin, so that may be an aspect of the woman's history. Um, she may be taking dopamine antagonists like antipsychotics and antiemetics can have an antagonistic effect on dopamine. So important to ask about those in the history. Uh, so if a woman doesn't want to become pregnant, she can have the, cor the co combined oral contraceptive pill, um, which will help bring her estrogen levels back up. And if she does want to become pregnant, then she can give an LH and FSH uh, or pulsatile GnRH. So final condition, polycystic ovarian syndrome, is very, very common. Um, hormone, important to talk about hormones at ovulation, um, as they can be mixed up. So in normal ovulation, FSH, LH and estrogen are all increased. But in polycystic ovarian syndrome, FSH is normal, LH is increased and estrogen is normal. Uh, in polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, testosterone is also usually increased and prolactin and TSH are both normal. So, in the history, uh, you may find that there's been some recent weight changes, weight gain, you might have a family history, um, and often these women might have diabetes mellitus type 2. Uh, on examination, you may find some acne, uh, some herticism due to the increased androgens, increased testosterone and the blood results. Uh, there may also be acanthosis as well. So important investigations, uh, you can do a glucose tolerance test just to assess the diabetes and blood sugars um, as they may have to have a problem, they have a problem with that. Um, if a woman's insulin resistant then insulin is increased to try and reduce blood glucose but insulin is a multiplier for LH and um, so LH then produces more androgens uh, so that is a problem there because that's why there is increased testosterone 
um, the women may also be quite obese. Uh, and as weight goes up, the production of sex hormone binding globulin actually decreases. And this usually that's like a sponge for androgens. Um, so that just means there's more testosterone that's bioavailable for the body to use, causing these androgenic signs. So investigations, glucose tolerance test, you also want to do an ultrasound scan of the ovary as well to see if you can see this, the cysts. So risks to the women, there's diabetes, um, and PCOS is also associated with hyperplasia of the endometrium, um, and if this is ongoing for a long time, it can cause cancer. So management, you'd want the women to lose weight to help increase levels of sex hormone binding globulin again. Um, take metformin to help with uh, glucose control. Cosmetics can be used to help cover up acne. Um, and then you'd also want the combined oral contraceptive pill if the woman doesn't want to become pregnant to allow for a pre progesterone withdrawal bleed after three weeks of taking it. Um, so this should help maintain regular periods. Or if a woman does want to become pregnant, um, she should have FSH in the first five to seven days of the cycle. Um, and this can be done by giving them an oestrogen blocker such as clomiphene or tamoxifen.